In this tutorial, I'm going to show a really interesting way to quickly create a program that runs Google searches from the terminal, the command prompt, or from within your IDE so that you can make things a little bit more efficient. So as we can see here, this program takes the user input. We want to look up the search term SQL coding tips on Google. It will return the top 10 ranked results and the associated URL. And we can go ahead there and look into what may interest us. It is important to note that this isn't the most developed package. It doesn't return a lot of potential data points that we may like to see. But as you can see, we use functions. You get an introduction almost to, to how you sort of start to work with APIs without some of the complexity um, and a lot of good other concepts that we'll explore. So let's actually look into building the code out. If you haven't worked with this package before, you can simply pip install via your command prompt or terminal conda whatever that may be whichever distribution you're using but you can use pip install google search dash python as you can see here commented for the actual installation and then we can import search from google search and that will give us all of the dependencies that we need so the next thing that we need to do is we're going to use a function here to make everything a bit cleaner a user defined function and what this will do is perform the google search and print results now this is already the google search Python library is already built on top of requests in Beautiful Soup, so it's got a lot of powerful scraping functionality, so we don't need to do too much. We'll define our function, which I'll just call Google Search, and it's going to take a query, which is essentially just going to be the search term. It saves us having to explicitly um, define it here within the search results variable. So within there, we'll pass in the query, which we'll see soon, that will be the search term, and we're just going to limit the number of ranked Google results to 10. And now what we want to do is the next stage in our function, we want to print the search results, but we can use enumerate to start a loop, assign an index against each result so that we can track those, uh, th those number of results that we're receiving. So we'll say for, we'll have a for loop for i, and the result that we get, uh, we can go ahead and print that essentially. So we use an f string, uh, just a formatting string, of course, newer within Python 3. To, uh, to keep everything clean and we will print the text string result we will also show the index i've used i so for i in the for loop just shorthand for index you can use any naming convention you want and we're going to return the result which will be that url string and from here all we need to do is actually go ahead and call the function that we've defined or called uh, google search so this line here is going to call the Google search function after the comment and it will pass the user's input that we've named query as the argument here and then we can execute the function and provide the Google search. So overall this code essentially is allowing a user to input a search term and we can perform the Google search with the Google search library. It will retrieve the top 10 search results and print them along with the corresponding index that we've made slightly clean with those F strings. So I want to take user input to make it a bit more dynamic, a bit more real world like. So that query can be equal to input. We ask the user what they'd like to search for and whatever input they place will be stored against that query variable that forms our search term as per our function. And we'll use that to call the function by just using the function name and query, which is the input. So now, as we've seen before at the start of this video, if we go ahead and run this, we will return the top 10 website hits or ranked hits on Google with the associated URL. So again, we'll ask the user for an input of what we want to search for. We'll just say for convenience, SQL coding tips, a good, uh, good data practice there to, to look into. And there we go. We have the 10 results. So this is really lightweight and flexible, but an interesting way to sort of practice some of those core Python and data skills.